Hello everybody, welcome back to Language Litigation and Integration Part 95, Casual Conversations 33. Random, bunch of random stuff today. Uh, talks about some language stuff. I'll be doing more language lessons soon. Again, I just like translating in the summer, go outside and s sit outside and do, get out my dictionaries and do stuff like that. But I'll be doing more language. I probably haven't done those videos since probably September time frame. But, We'll be talking about polyglots, linguists, language learning software. I've watched a couple people on the internet that speak a bunch of languages. Just my thoughts there. Talk again the Freedom Envoy. The truckers for freedom, baby. Just freedoms everywhere. I just bleed freedom, freedoms. I snort freedoms. I eat freedoms. I huff freedoms. I do all the freedoms. Um, and I watched Questioning Sam Harris, Season 4, Episode 81 of the Jordan Peterson Podcast. Some talking points there, but again, a psychologist interviewing a neurologist is not, not going to get too many fundamental questions out of that. <laughs> and then probably, probably have some time for some stories today. We get all, all this kind of random left and right and just hodgepodge of stuff. But the first guy I watched is Jauma. Alma, Jauma, popular dude, he's got like 4.7 million subs on YouTube, he's a white dude that speaks Chinese, I've seen a bunch of his videos, I, uh, I'm subscribed to his YouTube channel, I, I don't speak Chinese, and I haven't really given a genuine attempt at writing in languages that aren't using the Roman alphabet, like I under, but I'll go through, but then the other guy, but like I said, I'd, I'd rather just like, the way I learn is I like to associate the letters to the sounds. So I have to learn, learn the, the, the alphabets. And again, I'm decent at the Russian alphabet, decent at, better at the Russian Cyrillic alphabet than the um, Greek alphabet. But I've practiced them enough that it's, again, it's just I don't use them. So it's not like I haven't really solidified those yet. But then I'll talk about, well, we'll just, we'll talk, the, the, he did a, the video I wanted to respond to directly was he did the uh, the Chinese, I think it was originally titled the video, so if you want to go watch it, but it's like, white guy gets embarrassed by Duolingo Chinese test. He doesn't actually get embarrassed. I thought he did, did well. But he has, there was a good example on there of just translation. The last question he got on there, and again, like I said, I don't speak Chinese, but his pronunciation sounded fine. Phonetically, just a, a little maybe a slight accent, but not, not enough for me to notice, strictly going off of listening to Chinese people speak versus him speak, not, I'm not speaking Chinese. But, just, you know, the correct semantic translation being marked wrong, and, like, just overall in general, I'm not a great big fan of language learning software for this reason. The example he had, his last, he got an X, he translated from Chinese to English, the spring rolls from that restaurant are not tasty, and he got X'd on that, and the spring roll, and it, the correct answer was said, the spring rolls from that restaurant are bad. And so, totally agree with you, Zhao Ma, that, that that is a fine translation. Again, I, I don't know what tasty is in Chinese. But I, I thought, I, I didn't think you got destroyed. I thought you did a good job. I thought your pronunciation was fine, as, as far as I could understand it. For Duolingo, can I used to use Duolingo? It doesn't, for me, all those, anything... It isn't my language learning, <coughs> uh, not system, but it's how anyone learns language at all. It's how you learned your first language. But all of those things where it's got like 77 skills and rewards, I don't think they're bad, but I just, I really think it's more vocabulary building. Translate. Really understand how to associate sound to letters, know how to conjugate the present, past, and future tense, and then build a vocabulary, and then translate word for word. But, so those were the only thoughts there. I thought... I did, I did not Jiaoma. He says, "Do you th did you guys think I got destroyed?" Because he did it as a live stream. Uh, I did not think you got destroyed. I thought you did fine. Um, another guy. I don't know how to even pronounce his name. I don't speak Dutch. Wouter Korduweiner. Korduweiner. But another dude. He is a polyglot that speaks 29 plus languages at different levels. So I just watched a, a video. It's most one of his most recent ones. Again, he's got a bunch of videos. I know this guy's probably got 400,000 subscribers. I listened to his Spanish, Espanol. I just he, he spoke a bunch of different languages, and, and the ones that I, if, the ones that I know, I graded for his pronunciation. What I thought, I thought his Espanol was a probably probably A minus, B plus. German, thought was a B. 
Man, probably B+. Plus. But then again, I'm not super great with Dutch, so I'm not sure. What, I can't pick up an accent between German and Dutch. Mandarin, Denik Ray, don't speak. Russian, A minus. <laughs> Actually, yeah, like, like I said, I don't. I, I couldn't probably write or read, read or write anything in Russian. But I watched the Moskowski Kazachi Or video, like the whole thing, like an hour and a half. And I've definitely followed like what's going on, and I don't really know that many words. But Kakadave <laughs> Bujin. I don't know. I don't, don't even know what the fuck that means. But I thought his pronunciation was an A minus. Um, French, I gave it a B minus. Uh, Italian, I gave it a B. Dutch, don't speak. Native, I'm assuming I'll give that an A. But I don't speak Dutch. English, B plus. I mean, definitely hear an accent. Farsi, don't speak at all. Turkish, don't speak at all. Azerbaijani, don't speak at all. Polish, I gave it a B plus. But there was another, I don't have the exact comment, but there was another exchange on one of his videos about, again, just, it's like, if I give you, if I don't speak your language, you get a free cheeseburger or a free bubble tea or a free something. And he, he has an exchange with a Greek-speaking lady, and <laughs> she basically says, like, you know, oh, you speak Greek, you, never, we, you should never go there. And then he responds with, like, oh, I love Greek, I can't wait to travel there sometime. So I thought that was genuinely funny. But I have logical fluency versus resonance demonstration. And when you speak to a native, they don't expect you to be able to resonate like them just because you don't look like them. So, and again, not, not skin tone, but just locality, like literally where you're from. But the initial resonance demonstration, that's what, you know, will make people say, oh, wow, you can speak this language, which is really just a physical development. Right? It's, not, it's not Duolingo or Babel. It's literally just developing your vocal cords to be able to mimic the sounds of the language. And so that's, again, that's why I always talk about uh, listening to songs, singing, really ex expressing and, and training your ability to resonate. But logical fluency, again, that's more of like the poor and parda for, from the French and Spanish that I talked about. Again, people will use poor and espanol all the time incorrectly, but if you understand the logic, it doesn't, you can't fuck it up, like, like interpreting it. Um, and again, like you said, English is my first language. When I would go to high school and grade papers in English, it sounded like I was grading monkeys, grade writing stuff. So you, we actually have to re read and write. We actually have to do those things. Um, so that's really it. Like, again, I don't, like you said, but to me, again, like many languages is like many instruments. Most people don't learn to practice one, but once you pick up the basics, it's really not like a wow factor, honestly. But I think they're good. I thought both Wouter, Kord, Du, Wainer, and Zhao Ma both were good linguists. I did. So now, moving on. Oh, don't mind me. Just got my, just got my kazoo here. I'm gonna use it to uh, huff some freedom. Ah, uh, mmm, freedom, baby. I didn't actually snort anything. I just faked. <laughs> but uh, the freedom envoy. I've never done cocaine. I've never, I've never snorted anything. Well, that's false. I did snort DMT one time, just, just for funsies. But I've never. That was the only time I snorted something. But I was just huffing, huffing some freedoms. But uh, the Freedom Envoy is now causing economic damage from Detroit to Ontario. Sue them, LOL. I was being a, another one in France is just beginning. Man, again, maybe, maybe, maybe we should get screeching bald eagles from many countries. That would be pretty cool. But serious, I was one hundred percent serious. They should get the ten million from the their their fundraising thing. But a, a peaceful protest. Peaceful would not include destroying economies. So if you're driving your trucks through the town and blaring your horns maybe a little bit, that's not too bad. Waving some flags, having a parade, not too bad. Shutting down your fucking trucks and breaking the, the economic route from Detroit to Ontario. And what's that worth? I have no idea. Like, literally no idea. A billion dollars a day, a billion dollars an hour means something substantial. So just sue those motherfuckers. Seriously, if you fuck up my business, I'm going to sue you. So, that's what I would fucking do. And I'd like to see one of these these first cousin fuckers. Yeah, you know, truckers probably fucking their cousins, let's be honest. But, they can't, they can't afford to, you pay their fucking mortgage. So now, bam, you distribute your, your 10 million bucks over, you know, 10,000 fucking people. You each get like, you know, a thousand bucks. That'd be pretty cool. I'd be able to buy a... Buy, buy a new suspension for your truck. 
<laughs> Probably not, actually. Almost certainly not. A big truck. Fuck no. <laughs> oh, gosh. But, yeah, if they're causing economic damage, I would 100% sue them or, or take punitive action. 100%. But again, I don't, I don't, I don't think if a trucker can afford a lawsuit. Question, that's really, that's really it. But another one in France is just getting going. Oh, good. Oh, go oh, golly gee. Sweet. Cool beans. Fantastic. Questioning Sam Harris, Season 4, Episode 81. Not that many talking points. Again, Sam Harris is still not sure what the self is. Sam, all of the dollar bills in your bank account that are assigned to the self that says Sam Harris... Since the self doesn't exist and it's an illusion, you can still send those to me. And I will still, since self, being selfless, Sam, and send me your fucking money. <laughs> but again, that's like his big thing. Like, what is itself? It's an organism. It's a conscious being. It's someone who can think. Someone who can move. Someone who can make choices. <laughs> so it's a simple question. What, they, what is truth? Truth is true. Truth is real. What is reality? Reality is real. Truth is true. It's real subtle, Sam. It's going to sneak up on you. The self. Oh, the, the brain chemistry of the super intellectuals. <laughs> and they say, what constitutes a good life? Uh, living it. Doing what you want to do. Having rights and pursuing your goals. That's what makes a good life. <laughs> But those are the big philosophical questions. And this was only like an hour and a half. I got like four talking points. What's more useful? Writing a book, lectures, podcast, speaking, speaking, or an app? Because Sam basically says his channel or his like create or his professional output is his app and podcast. Again, I do all of these things, so it really doesn't matter. Again, like if you like reading a book versus listening to a book on uh on tape, I, I see literally no difference if you're engaged and thinking about it. So again, no real, nothing really exciting from this conversation. The, then they talk about the is-ought conundrum. Is defines, ought conjectures with morality. What is, is. What ought to be, is what should be. What should be typically implies some sort of morality or just maybe not even morality but direction, right? It's like going left or right to not to avoid falling off a cliff like that's not really good or bad but that's what you ought to do that you should ought to not fall into the fucking valley and die so that's the whole solution there um awe and wonder they talk about awe and wonder looking up at the at the solar system at the, the galaxy with all the civilizations that don't fucking exist <laughs> But awe and wonder, again, that's typically throughout, throughout a lot of cultures and religious texts and historical documents. But it's really the awareness of range. Whether you're really good at math, deriving first, integrating first principle variables like sensorality, or you're trying to learn to tie your shoe because you're a three-year-old or mentally retarded, there's still just so much more shit out there to experience. So you look up, you see all this stuff, they're like, ah, oh, I could go there. No, I can go there, but like, this is all this stuff is real and I can't, I can't even begin to appreciate or understand it or think about it. So that's really where it's awe and wonder come from the awareness of range of just physical reality. And then I just, again, for example, from Thomas Tull on Lex Friedman's podcast a couple episodes ago, he says, I can hear what you're doing, but not like that. Referencing my musical pieces, playing the guitar, but again, musical instruments is a great example. Everyone can watch music, well, listen to a song and hear it, hear what's being played, but they, but they know the, they have to get their fingers. What do the fingers do? They have to build their dexterity. So they're aware of the range that they don't, the, the skill set they don't have. So that's just a good example there. And then uh, Sam says, if you drink 12 beers a night and cheat on your wife, that's probably not good. Again, another another psych or neur neurologist. Again, just basically just stealing shit off my lectures. I don't have a wife. Can't beat my wife. I do the beers, but I can't cheat on my wife when I have one. <laughs> but then he says everything that is real is discoverable today. Sam Harris. No, 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 no. Knowledge is limited. You can't if it's if it's 
Right, we have known knowns, known unknowns, and unknown unknowns. Not even the known unknowns are completely discoverable. So everything that is real is discoverable today? No. And that was literally, it was an hour and 45 minute conversation, and I have a couple lines of him stealing my thoughts on my research, and that was really it. So, not enough to title this one, Harris and Peterson, Still Casual Conversations, 33. So now some stories. So I told you the story about my brother and my cousin, again at the Salt Fork State Park, the lake, um, doing, doing backflips off the tube and me yelling at them, and then they're getting all like, getting trying to come at me. But, uh, there, was a, there was another funny story literally right before that story with, with my cousin Sam. So I'll tell you that. What else do I got? Again, just really just random shit. But we'll start there. So my, my cousin Sam, and again, this is another, like I told you my the story about my friend Jimmy, you know, getting all antsy and excited about going down to Ohio State campus and almost fucking you turning right into getting T-boned. Well, the same type of thing kind of happened with my cousin. Again, my stuff hasn't been published. No one really respects me. People still, whatever, whatever gossip behind my back, whatever they decide, it's, it's, it, that's what my life is, even when it isn't. But we're at the lake, and in the like uh, state park area, there's no, there's no like, I don't even know if they're allowed to have alcohol. We definitely never had alcohol there. But there's no, there's no like convenience stores. You have to drive outside of the park a little bit. And it takes, once you get in Salt Fort State Park, it still takes you probably about 15 to, probably about 10, 15 minutes to get to the cabins, which is where we typically stayed. But so we're going, we're going to get some beer and we're going out of the park. Go to get the beer, go to this little convenience store that's right, right at the park entrance, the most convenient one, hence the convenience store. But in there, we, we get some beer and then we come back out and then there was a, another, like, I don't know, like a, it was a couple or just one guy, I think it was a couple, a guy and a girl, and they get in an F-150 truck and he like, the F-150 like burns out uh, of the parking lot, like kind of like clips like a, a little like sigh, a sign, just like a, you know, 50% off this today, just a little sign on the side of the road, nothing like, not like big, it wasn't like bolted down or not a billboard or anything. And so my cousin again, literally, literally is like he starts racing the F-150. The F-150 burns out, and my cousin has just like a little two-seater, uh, I don't know, just a little zippy car. Goes pretty fast. I don't, I don't remember what it was, but he starts really, like he like starts racing the dude. And then we get on like a major, like a pretty much a major highway getting into the Salt Fork State Park. It's probably 77, if anyone knows the area. It's probably goes. It goes Interstate 70 East, 77, it's like right on 77, or maybe it's like off road of that. You're going like 45, 50 miles an hour. And so the F-150 like speeds ahead, and my cousin you know, he just decides he's going to race him. And so he literally goes, and it's a, it's a, it's a dashed yellow line, but we're in the right-hand lane, it's a two-way two road, and he just goes on the other side, passes like five or six fucking cars. And I, I literally was like, there was like no expect, no like signs of getting back into the right lane, literally in the oncoming traffic. I just remember thinking, like, I'm gonna get Paul Walker here, man. Like, this is it, I'm done. And he literally said to me, if like, if you, if you feel unsafe, I'll slow down. And I was like, please just don't kill me. That's literally what I said to him. Doesn't slow down, keeps fucking racing the, the F-150. The, then we get into the actual like park area, which was like, you're supposed to go like 2025. And he was still doing like 45, 50, I mean like way over the speed limit. I'm just like, what the fuck is going on here? But again, got edgy weirdos, we gotta, we gotta blah, 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 act weird. I'm just like, please, please don't Paul Walker me. The F-150 turns off into like a different part of the park. And it wasn't, it wasn't like, a, it wasn't like a, gra they were literally just racing. It wasn't like, like road rage, it was just racing, which still did not make me feel safe. But... So my cousin kind of waves to the guy, the other guy pulls off to go to wherever his cabin or wherever they were staying was at, and we go pack, park down the, at the cabins where we're staying. And then about 10 minutes later, five, 10 minutes later, my, one of my aunts and, 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 and my uncle, or my, she's remarried to, to her husband, they come down there, and then they, it, they were one of like the four or five cars that we passed on 77 or whatever the road was 
getting into the fucking park. And my aunt comes up to me and goes, you need to slow down next time coming into the park, Brad. To which I responded, wasn't driving. That's all I said, wasn't driving, because I wasn't. But that's what scapegoat goes. My, my, well, my cousin's trying to like impress me, not even impress me, just act reckless around me. And this is literally right before the, they're jumping off the tubes doing backflips right next to the fucking shore, which I screamed at them. So like, in the matter of like, again, this is always how my family works. It's just, I'm the scapegoat, fuck bread. And so I, I'm thinking I'm going to fucking die like Paul Walker. My cousin's being reckless, completely on his own volition. I am not comfortable with it at all. And then my aunt's going to come insult me. Wasn't driving, because I, well, I wasn't. So. <laughs> and then again, this is, this is literally right before the, the tube store with my, my brother Brian and my cousin Sam. One more story. So now just another, again, I told you, told you the story about my brother literally like young getting off the school bus and launching a pen at my head and making me bleed. So I thought of another, another t violent attempt at my brother to lash out at me. This is actually this is a quick story, but a funny one, kind of. <laughs> but so for our high school, my brother went to St. Charles for his freshman year, then DeSales. I went to DeSales High School in Columbus, Ohio, all four years. But so I'm in eighth grade. My brother's a sophomore at DeSales, and in eighth grade you have um, eighth grade visits. You just go tour some high schools and see see where the great prospects for the future are going to be. We're going to learn and discover and grow and get scapegoated and tortured by a bunch of adults. But to learn and to grow, like that teacher that thought I was high, but then I told her I wasn't sleeping and she said good. Just like that. Woohoo! <laughs> I've been pretty inspired by uh, the LA Beast. I haven't seen, I, I watched him back in uh, high school quite a bit, but I've been enjoying his videos. I saw you got demonetized, LA Beast, for your, your gauntlet challenge. Like, why? Honestly, LA Beast video, the, the, I commented I was going to report it to the New Jersey authorities for eating a whole jar of mustard, because that's pretty illegal. But, in all, all seriousness, why the fuck was that video demonetized? So, bad job, YouTube. Don't demonetize the LA Beast. LA Beast, good job. You were very inspiring, actually. But, grand, but have a good day! That's, that's kind of hitting my annotations today. <laughs> but anyway, back to the story. So, 8th grade visits, my brother's at DeSales, I'm gonna go visit there. And, when we go in there, you know, I'm walk, we're, I forget how the tour went. But the, go in there, and we're just walking kind of down the main hallway. And right down the main hallway, you go right, you can go to like the, the locker rooms and out towards the athletic fields left to our, our school, which is like a big square, two-story square type of deal, and go left, and it's right in the cafeteria. And so I'm walking down the center of the hallway, and <laughs> my brother sees me, and he goes, Hey, Brad! And I just look over, and again, the dude attacks me. He literally takes a calculator and flings it at me. I'm pretty athletic, so I just duck out of the way. Calculator flies by me and hits this chick right in the fucking head. Like, literally, she just goes, oh! Now, ironically, the chick's name was Olivia, with an A. If she, had, she, I don't know if she ever watched this, but, but we actually, oh, she was our neighbor. Like, our, like, like, told you, my parents had a house. We, li we lived in Westerville, kind of off, right off Sunbury Road, right across from Hoover Dam. And uh, then we moved to a new place. It probably like seventh, eighth grade. So the, the chick that he hit was literally our neighbor. Was, was, no, she wasn't the neighbor. Yeah, she, yeah, no, 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 that was Sierra. No, that was a different girl. That was a girl younger than us. Not her, but she lived in her neighborhood. She, she rode the same bus as us in, in, in uh, grade school. And so, so it wasn't the neighbor. It wasn't the neighbor. No, that was a different girl. But the <laughs> throws, throws this calculator, hits the chick in the head. I don't know if she starts bleeding or not. Basically, I think, it, I think my brother was going to get in trouble, but because we knew her and like, she, she, she's a really nice person, the Olivia girl. I'm not going to say her last name. But she, she basically was just like, you know, to the, to the high school people, you know, don't, don't, don't do anything, don't, I know Brian, it's fine, it's okay type of deal. But again, just another, another attempt at Brian just launching something at my head. So that's, that's fun and exciting. Um, any other stories? Any other quick ones? 
Uh, not really. Oh, here's another real quick one. I got made fun of. This is actually on my Instagram, and I, don't, I can't remember the password. I don't have the, the reset, uh, the email to reset the password for my Instagram. It's still up, but it's on Instagram for sure. When I put up that billboard, and I should, I should get the I should put up a cut screen and just show you what the billboard was, but it's, it's out there. You'll see it. But so I put up that billboard, and again, some dude named Killer Mike. Ooh, Killer Mike, I'm scared, man. Oh, put on Twitter like I don't, I don't know, I didn't know you had to do this to to get a PhD. And again, as I'm literally calling out the police department, they were they were like, what's? I'm not sure what because I put like again, I, I forget the exact quote of the of the billboard now, but it was like you know OSU faculty and PD, and they're like, what could PD stand for? Police department. I literally put up a billboard calling out the police department to enforce the fucking law, literally. But, again, it gets put on Reddit, again, every festering beta male female society is just waiting to judge. And again, they have no idea what's going on, so why not make fun of somebody that looks like he's doing something weird, when in actuality he's helping everybody. But that's the guy we're going to make fun of, yeah, let's, let's do that. And so I get this, I get a, a direct message on Instagram from this, from this dude, probably a couple years younger than me. And he really, he's really directly trying to talk shit. And then I tell you how I deal with shit is I don't. You either threaten me and I respond accordingly or I don't fucking care. And so this guy just starts like ripping on me. And again, but in a way where it's just like, this guy does not have all of his IQ points. Like, like actually. And so I literally just said to the guy, I forget, his name was Mike. His name was Dubstep Dad on Instagram. But his name was Mike. Michael. And I just said, Michael, are you... Do you have Down syndrome? To which he just responded, yes. And I was going to lay into him very heavily, and by heavily I mean, like, threats. And, <laughs> but he turned out to be, like, actually mentally retarded. I know we're not supposed to say the retard word, but if someone walks around like this, oh, and then makes fun of me, well, he's fucking retarded. So that was the time I got fun of, made fun of by an actually retarded person for doing scientific research, which... Again, Michael, dubstep dad, if you can ever learn to tie your shoes by yourself, buddy, I believe in you. I believe in you, you big fucking retard. I, I believe in you. Yeah, if you can make fun of my family members, I can make fun of you because you can't fucking stop drooling on yourself. <laughs> so fuck dubstep dad on Instagram. Thank you for watching another wonderfully politically correct and informative and inclusive and spreading love and joy video from Brad. Language litigation integration part 95, casual conversations 33. Music piece dropping today or tomorrow. Got another economics thing done. Do want to do more translations? See you soon.